Welcome back everyone. This is my second video on assembler algorithm and data structures. And in the first video, as you may have watched, uh, the primary data structures involved in the assembler algorithm we have discussed there. The data structures involved in assembler algorithm construction or operation code table, symbol table and location counter. And in this video, we are going to learn two passes of the assembler. First, we need to understand why do we require two passes for an assembler algorithm. To start with, what is an assembler? Assembler is a translator. It just converts assembly language program to machine code. Basically, the assembler goes through line by line and it translates it into machine code. And this kind of translation, sequential translation, it works fine if the operand is present in the register because the assembler will be knowing where all the registers are present. So this works fine for, for all the instruction which contains the operand in a register. But for example, we have an uh, instruction something like this. We have an instruction like this, for example, jump to subroutine forward and forward is appearing somewhere later in my program. For the reference, I will assign line numbers to the program. Let's say this J sub instruction it is present in line number 5 and this forward is present in line number 55. How could possibly an assembler is knowing the address of the forward label? Uh, which is appearing at line number 55. How could an assembler is knowing this address when it is still processing line number 5? This kind of problem we call as forward reference which we have already discussed in detail. So to solve or to address the forward reference problem, the assembler scans the code twice. This twice scanning we call it as two passes of an assembler. During pass 1, the major job of the assembler algorithm is the construction of symbol table which contains all the labels present in the program and associate each label with its address. To do this, assembler algorithm has to assign addresses to each and every statement present in the program. This will be done with the help of the variable called as location counter. In short, we call it as LOCCTR. And during pass 2, actual translation will be mm, taken. Actual translation means object code is generated using the operation code table as well as the symbol table. Okay, so now let us start with the um, pass 1 of the algorithm and uh, before that, before that, please note that each source statement in this SIC or SICXC program uh, would have this format. It would optionally contain a label it would optionally contain a label followed by the mnemonic, followed by the mnemonic, followed by opcode, sorry, operand. Okay. Uh, each source statement, each statement, each line of the program will have this format. It can optionally have a label followed by a mnemonic, followed by the operand. Now, Whenever there is a start assembler directive found in our program, the start assembler directive will appear normally as the first line of our program and its syntax will be something like this. You will have the program name, any name, followed by the assembler directive start, followed by the starting address. I have purposely taken this line here because we have solved a problem having this as the starting line, right? Uh, so this is name of the program. This is assembler directive stating that our program is starting here at the address and you need to assemble your code in the memory starting from the address 105D, okay? So if opcode is a start, this is the opcode field. If it is a start, then what we have to do is we have to save this value as the starting address and also we need to set up the location counter value to this address. 
we have to initialize the location counter to this address because our program will be started from this address itself and if suppose this address itself is not present only the uh, program name is there start symbol is there sometimes zero will appear this this thing this zero thing is an important concept which we will see in our further video but right now we will concentrate only on the algorithm if the starting address is not specified then we have to save uh, zero as the starting address the same has to be initialized in the location counter as well okay please note please note in pass one of the algorithm we are just concentrating on the construction of the symbol table and also we are updating the location counter how location counter is updated it is dependent on what kind of instruction we are trying to process what kind of instruction or or a pseudo instruction which is nothing but the assembler directive okay so uh, let us go through the algorithm line by line please note um, the assemblers are not going to process any command lines we are not processing any command lines, so we are skipping all the command lines and we will look for the uh, label field and we try to find any symbol there what is our job that symbol has to be inserted into the symbol table along with the location counter value if you are getting any label in the label field insert that label into the symbol table along with its corresponding location counter value and before doing this please make sure that already this label is not defined in the table the assembler has to make sure this because it is not allowed to define same label name twice in your program or more than once in your program okay so if that label is already defined then assembler will generate an error flag stating that it is a duplicate symbol error so if there is a symbol this is what the assembler has to do during pass one and and for the opcodes for the opcodes how it has to be processed the opcode can be either an instruction or a pseudo instruction so if it is an instruction you need to make sure this is a valid instruction how can i say this is a valid instruction or not we are having a table called as operation code table what is the format of operation code table it will have all the mnemonic supported by the program and also its equivalent opcode right this kind of table already we have seen in our earlier video so whatever mnemonic you have used in your program that should be present in the operation code table then it signifies that that particular instruction is supported in your architecture if you have used any instruction which is not present in the op table then it is an error let's say for example uh, the programmer was intended to write a subtraction instruction Substra subtraction instruction is sub but while typing let's say he he has typed ESOB. SOB is it present in this operation code table? No. Then error has to be generated. This is what is explained here. Search the op tab for the op code. If it is not found, if it is not found, then you have to set the error flag stating that it is an invalid operation code. Otherwise, if it is a valid instruction, then what is our job in pass when we have to update the location counter? How to update the location counter? It always depends on length of the instruction. But in our SIC program, it is very simple to find the length of the instruction because all instructions are of equal length, 3 bytes. So, if the operation table is containing the opcode specified in your program, then you just have to add to the location counter. That's it. Else, if it is a pseudo instruction, if it is a pseudo instruction, we have to process four types of pseudo instructions in four different ways. What are four types of pseudo instructions? It can be either word, it can be either reserve word, it can be reserve byte or it is byte. I'll explain each case with an example. Mm, let me just clear this area so that I can take up few examples in this region. Okay, now what is the first possibility of a pseudo instruction? As I said, it can be word. What is an example of word? Let us say I have a word like this variable one word 
10. This indicates what? I am defining an integer constant and I am giving the name for the memory location word sized memory location I am giving a name as variable 1 and I am initializing it with a value 10. How much area we are defining here? One word of memory. One word of memory means how much bytes? It is 3 bytes. So whenever assembler directive finds the opcode as word it just has to add 3 bytes to the location counter. Word is over. What is the next possibility of pseudo instruction? It can be reserve word. If it is a reserve word, again we take up one example variable 2 reserve word 5 I will take. This indicates what I am reserving 5 words of memory. Each word is 3 bytes. So totally how many bytes I am reserving? It is 3 multiplied by 5. How many? It is 15 bytes. It is 15 bytes. So if op code is reserved word, then we have to add 3 multiplied by number specified in the operand field to the location counter. What is the number specified in the operand field? In my example, it was 5. Whatever it is in your program, you have to multiply that number with 3, get the value, add it to the location counter. So, this completes reserve word. Now, what is the next pseudo instruction possible? It is reserve byte. Reserve byte. Again, we will take an example for reserve byte. STR1 reserve byte 10 I will take. Now what we are trying to do? We are reserving bytes. How many bytes? 10 number of bytes. So how to update the location counter now? We just have to add this value directly to the location counter but make sure before adding this value convert it into hexadecimal. Okay, just convert this value into hexadecimal then add that value to the location counter. That's it. So now reserve byte is over. The last possibility is byte. For this also, let, us, let me take an example. Let us take the string value str2 byte c hello. Okay, so if the opcode is byte, what we have to do is we have to find length of the constant in bytes. Length of the constant. What is length of this constant which I have defined here? 1, 2, can count it as fine number of bytes. This constant value occupies fine number of bytes. How can I say it as byte? Because each character occupies one byte. We already have studied this. Each character occupies one byte. So how many bytes of data we require here? It is five bytes. So I have to update the location counter by five. I have to add five to the existing location counter value. Similarly, let me take up one more example. Uh, let's say input byte x 0 5. What is this x represents here? Hexadecimal value, right? Hexadecimal 1 byte. Now you have to update the location counter with 1. Because each digit in hexadecimal is 4 bits, I have defined 2 digits here. That means it is, it is uh, 1 byte, 8 bits. That means 1 byte. So you have to add 1 byte to the location counter value. So I repeat, whenever it is a word, just add 3 to the location counter. Whenever it is reserve word, you have to multiply 3 with the operand specified in the operand field, add it to the location counter. If opcode is reserve byte, directly add the operand field value to the location counter. If opcode is byte, then what you have to do is find the actual length of the constant in bytes, add that length to the location counter. And... Uh, Please remember, as and when the assembler gets a new line, that line has to be copied into the intermediate file as well because this intermediate file will be given as input to the pass to of the algorithm. And this process we have to repeat until we reach the end directive. And whenever end directive is reached, we need to find the length of the program. How to find length of the program? Our LOC CTR when we reach the end directive will be pointing to the last instruction in the program. So last instruction address minus starting address should be giving you the length of the program. You have to save this program length before you wind up the pass one of the algorithm. <laughs>